I'm happy that I get to speak to you at the end of the year. It's been over a full year since I've seen you and you've probably had the greatest success doing music of everybody that I've ever come across in my life. In the last, well, what's what, mad is what, what people don't know about me and Julie is uh, the, the kind of like first start of things for me that kept the ball rolling was I met Cyan Anderson and yeah. Julie at an I Love Live event. In Proud Camden. Proud Camden, <laughs> same night I met SB. Yeah. And then from there, everything, like I got introduced to so many different people Jamie, Skepta, like all these people that I put together this EP and then that blew everything up. So it's mad to kind of come full circle now and be, that was why I was so happy that this interview was happening. It does feel weird, doesn't it? Because I remember meeting you at Proud. And I grabbed your head and I was like, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> when we were younger, the biggest musician or artist in the world was like Michael Jackson, Prince. Do you know that now it's you? Yeah, I feel awkward with that. It's proper weird, isn't it? It is proper weird. It's good Adele didn't release an album, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, I'd, you know, it's good. Like, def definitely to be top ten is quite, is quite good. Um, yeah, what do you miss most about your year off? Now you've lived this crazy one. I don't know if I enjoyed my year off. Like, it was, it was good to... What? Yeah, man, it was good to have, but, like, it's weird. Like, I spent a month watching Lost, right? A month. Full month. I was like, I've never watched Lost. Previously on Lost. Yeah, I've never watched Lost. <laughs> but, like, that's... Lazy. That's such a waste of time. That's yeah. like it's, that was like six weeks of my life spent catching up on things because <laughs> someone said so, something was bad or something was good. Yeah, no wonder um, you didn't enjoy it that much. Usually, when people have a year off, it's like here's me in like Hawaii or like here's me at home oh, recording like you an see album. It, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like people were curious because no, people had literally no idea what I had done. Like I could have like joined a cult or something. But you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw a video the other day on YouTube of this guy and I watched it for 35 minutes, right? 35 minute video about how I was in the Illuminati and I was like, man, like... Oh yeah, and they find the triangles like in like between your glasses yeah, and, like, and your hair and stuff. Yeah, like covering up my eye yeah, yeah. and like uh, <laughs> I've got a song called Make It Rain and like all of that. So like, that's for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that your life is going to plan? Before th this year, mm. I'm, I'm to and 2016 as well, but, but I think before this year, uh, and most of last year, I'd say my professional life was exceeding my plan. It was exceeding expectations, yeah. but my personal life was getting a bit like put on the back burner. Mm. But I think having a year off and actually like putting everything back together and coming to the realization that you don't have to appease people the whole time. You don't have to always, just because someone else wants to do something doesn't mean that you have to. Yeah. So yeah, I think like professionally, I think my career has exceeded anyone's expectations. I, don't, I, like, I remember even saying when we booked the Wembley shows, I was like, let's book Wembley, and everyone was like, nah, like, slow down, <laughs> slow down, slow down. Like, er, like, no one, including me, has expected this rise. Be, yeah. But I think, personally, it's taken a bit of time to adjust to it. Do you think that's why you're a bit... Because you are a little bit more open now about your personal life. Do you think that's why? Because you've been able to get a good balance about life outside of music? Yeah, because there wasn't really much to speak about before. It, it wasn't even me being pers um, uh, like shut off about my personal yeah. life. It was just like, people would be like, oh, tell us about your personal life. And I'm like, well, I don't really have one at the moment. Like I go home and then go in the studio or like, yeah. like on the road, I spend the whole time arguing over the phone to someone that I'm meant to be with. Like it's like, yeah, it's, I think taking a year off gave it a lot of perspective. Mm. Um, so talk to me about your musical taste then, because you are into different types of music all over the spectrum. If you did the collaborations EP again, who would you have on it this time? I don't know. I think if I were to do it again, I'd want, I'd want to just, I'd want to pick all my favorite artists. Like not, not even like rap, hip hop, R and B or anything. I just pick my favorite artists. Right. And, okay. And work with them. Like who? Well, one of them would be Beyonce, and one of them would be Eminem. Those are two people that I've always wanted to work with. You're saying Beyonce and Eminem, which is making me feel really weird. Why? Because like. That's crazy. I love that. The first collaboration EP is what? JME. Yeah. Gets. Devlin. Devlin. Sway, Wretch. Yeah. New EP. Beyonce. Eminem. Well, I just feel, <laughs> I just feel like there's, there's probably one time in my life where I don't collaborate on my albums at all. Yeah. There's probably one more time in my life where I'm going to do that. And why not just pick the, pe the people I've always wanted to work with and just, and just go for it. What would the Eminem song be about and what would it be called? See, I think I'd do two different songs with him and choose one of them. But I think one of them would be like an introspective storytelling thing, like Stan, and one of them would be like a joke. You know when he used to like joke rap or like yeah. 
I was. Uh, it's got some sick. What was I rapping? This uh, I, in the shower this morning. I was doing that. I murder a round, one word at a time. You, you never, never heard, heard of, of a man as perverted, perverted as mine. What song's that? You better get rid uh, of that nine. It ain't gonna help. I'm back. What good's it gonna do against, against a man that strangles himself? Yeah. I'm waiting for hell, like hell. Yeah, yeah. Really, but I liked I'd when he would go mad. Like I like when he would do like accents. There's a tune called I think it's called Rain Man. Um, <laughs> oh, and the second verse on it's that. It's like, I wrapped uh, this whole verse, it didn't make sense or something. Yeah, like, at the it, end, uh, it's like... In the Bible, it says... Yeah. That, that one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like when he goes like that. That's always a good a good Eminem yeah. vibe for me. No, I'd go I'd go first or second album, or even, like, him on the, like, first D12 album, where it's just yeah. a bit, like, jokey. Or an introspective story. Are yeah. you, would you rap as what you Could you rap on a song with Eminem? Would you feel like this is just... This is not... Worth doing. I don't know because I feel like I don't feel like anyone thinks I can rap, but I I, re I really enjoy. But <laughs> well, you do it. But I really enjoy doing it. So like again, <laughs> you. <laughs> I really enjoy. I really enjoy doing it. But like yeah, I probably I probably on that in that aspect I wouldn't because um, you'd be going against one of the greatest rappers yeah, of, all, of all time. So I would just I'd stick what I to what I was good at. Like, I rap on my own stuff because I enjoy doing it. But I think if I was going to do it with him, yeah, I would. You just got to let him. Yeah. You just got to let him be. That's something that I would definitely put together in the future. That'd be so crazy. I think someone like Drake as well would be really fun to work with. Yeah, you two are very melodic. I'd want him to rap though, because I love it when he raps. When he's like, like when he's barring. Yeah. Yeah. When, when he's, he's a little bit vexed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think that's the that, that's what I would do for the next collaborations. And I think from I've always stayed open. You know, like I've just done two songs with Big Nasty for his album. Like I'm still open to working with whoever. But I think with my own records. It'd have to be your favourites. It would, yeah. It, the, the only way that it would work for me in my mind state at the moment is just psh, go for. Just go all yeah. the way. Um, I have to ask you this question because I feel like your career is going so well. How long do you think this is going to go for? People usually have five-year stages. All the artists that I've seen in like the um, since I've been sort of like ten have had like a five-year. Yeah, and that, and they've been like, and I've just passed that. I'm now on the seventh year, so <laughs> I'm hoping that I've got another like seven or eight years. I hope like fifteen years. I don't really want to do longer than that, really. I'd I'd like to do fifteen years and then carry on releasing albums, but I don't really want to murk for fifteen years, like past that, because then that actually really affects your lifestyle. You can't actually ever, ever be just a member of the public again yeah. and just kind of go about your life and take your kids to school. What is driving you? To continue? Initially, it was uh, the drive that I had to just get to the point I wanted to get to. Mm. But now it's kind of uh, curiosity. Kind I was of just like, what the hell is going to happen? Yeah, the very fact I can say to you, I, I hope I can do a song with Beyonce and Eminem, and that's actually possible. Yeah. That's mental. So, like, how, how, how far, <laughs> how, how, much, how much further can you push it? Do you know, that's true. Do you know what I mean? It's just you seem really fe fearless. Because for me, I think like everybody loves the underdog, innit? Everybody loves like the person that's trying to make it. Whereas you're the guy who's like, that's been for us, you've made it. But that's been the odd shift. Is because I've spent the first three or four years of my career being an underdog, and now it's not. And like I remember being on stage with Stormzy at the Brits, and it, I felt like, like, like introducing like the new underdog, and like it's like, I don't know. I felt <laughs> I felt kind of like past my prime a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's the guy now. So like, you know, I actually felt excited to play with him. But yeah, so it's been an odd shift. Like Have you felt the shift of people wanting you to win and rooting for you to be like, like? Absolutely, yeah. And it's happened on this album. And um, I spoke to Taylor about it actually, because Taylor had like a load of backlash yeah. after the, the, the last album. And she just said like, when your when your star gets that high, you're like a target for, for for everyone. If you and if you put like one foot out of place, that's like. And I've really noticed it on this album because like I've never had a hit like Shape of You. I've never had an album sell this fast or like this much. Mm. Never played stadiums in every country. It's kind of like, it's it's really shifted. But I guess the good thing about it is uh, when you're at that level, everyone's made their mind up. Like everyone. There's like, there's no one that you can speak to and you'll say, what do you think of Ed's music? And I'll go, <laughs> they'll be like, I hate it or <laughs> I really love it. And, yeah. and I think that's that's great that everyone's made their mind up, but it's an unhealthy place to be in. Because when, when no one had made their mind up, your ego can be like in the balance. But here it's like either my ego is like completely zero because everyone thinks yeah. and hates me or it's like so big because every like all my fans are like, oh, this is, you know, like, so it's like, it's a really dangerous place and you have to kind of remain in the middle and be balanced. Um, 
so yeah, the shift from going to underdog to not underdog and from love to not as loved, even though, you know, the album's done really well and we sell a bunch of tickets, like, there's probably a lo louder voices out there that don't like it yeah. because they because they want to put it down because it's it's popular. So it's kind of this is another thing of getting rid of all sort of social media and phones is remaining in the middle and having like I have twelve schoolmates that I'm really close with yeah. that like I hang out with all the time and they're kind of my only mates I do see like all the, time. All the time. Yeah, yeah. and that keeps me in the middle. People are like you're a really normal guy. You're a very normal human. How well, do you remain so normal? I don't, I'd say I've, I talk to interviews about this. I don't think it's normal. I think it's English. I think people look at you that way because you, you obviously come across that way and because you don't do extrovert crazy things in front of us anyway. You might, you might have a really <laughs> crazy made... house with a lion in a cage. Um... No, I definitely do crazy <laughs> things. Definitely like... Like, in, like I'm into like mad weird art. I actually have a big painting in my house that just says... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it says pipe down. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> Probably about the size of that whole wall. It's great. Like, people walk in and be like, what is that? I just like, I like stuff that offends people. Like, I think the thing that people love about you the most, though, is that you, you are very British. You've got that British thing about you. Yes, my personality probably contradicts some of the music that I make or, like, just being open and wild doesn't but I think when someone sees that and they like the song as well and they're like I like you as and I think that's why it's so split is people can really really like me or really really dislike me but if they like me as a person and they like my music they're more likely to go to a concert or yeah. get a CD or yeah and I just think. be accepting of what it is that you're you know because every time Adele's interviewed I watch it and I go I love it. She's amazing. Great, you know, <laughs> yeah. she'll be like, you know like and you'll just be like wow I'm buying your album like I think <laughs> you know what I mean though yeah I agree with you completely um, let's just end on a nice one. Uh, tell us about if you could look into the future for 10 years, what's going to be the biggest and best moment to come for Ed Sheeran? Honestly, this sounds super, super, super cheesy, but I think the point in life is to have a family and raise your kids really well and let them then raise a family and do that and like basically pass it on. So I think, I think the end goal for anything is children. And I don't know if I'll have them in 10 years, but I would like to at least start yeah. thinking about it. So yeah, I think I think having a kid or many. Don't do this to me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>